So we're going to start with exercise number four. And exercise number four says, come up with the Fourier transform of a pure sine wave, okay, where f of t Come up with the Fourier transform of a pure sine wave for all time. Now, in the notes, we did the example for cosine. Okay, so we're going to use the same method for sine, but we're going to come up with a slightly different solution. Okay, now, as we did with, with cosine, we know that we can represent the sine wave as a series of exponentials. Okay, and for, for sine, you can say sine omega naught t is 1 over 2j e to the j omega naught t minus e to the minus j omega naught t. OK, that's Euler came up with the relationship between sine, cosine and e. OK, and so we can use those relationships to convert sine into um, exponentials. And the thing is, is we know how to take the Fourier transform of both of those, OK? We could write 1 over 2j outside, because that um, is a constant, in a sense. We have the Fourier transform of e to the j omega naught t minus 1 over 2j, the Fourier transform of e to the minus j omega naught t. Now you remember from last week that if you take the Fourier transform of 1, yeah, you end up with this delta function. Uh, yeah. Yes, do you remember that last week? <coughs> and if you had the so that, and that meant that if you have the Fourier transform of 1 times by e to the j omega naught t, which is what this is. Okay, you ended up with a shift, shifted delta function, delta omega minus omega naught. Yeah, because that e to the minus j, e to the j omega t indicates there's a shift in the frequency spectrum from omega equaling naught to omega naught. Okay, and so this first one up here, we can write is pi over j delta omega minus omega naught minus pi over j because this is sorry this is a times by 2 pi I forgot about that and that's uh, <coughs> delta omega plus omega naught okay so there's the, there's the Fourier transform Sine omega naught t. You'll notice that the Fourier transform of sine omega naught t is actually complex. We've got j's on the bottom down there, whereas cosine is not complex. Question five. Well, then the notes it says exam level question. Obviously, this question in particular formed part of an exam level question, so that's why. I've written it there. <laughs> and we've, like I said, we've actually covered some of this in the, in the lecture, but we'll go through the whole question in, in, pro, in total. Sketch the Fourier transform spectrum for a pure cosine signal. Go on to sketch the Fourier transform spectrum for a cosine signal of, of finite duration. Show your reasoning diagrammatically or otherwise. Okay, so we've got a couple of parts to this question. We can go through the same process for, to find it analytically, cosine omega naught t, OK, and this is for an infinite signal, so not a finite duration. This is one half, and then we've got e j omega naught t plus e to the minus j omega naught t. And 
And so we get one half Fourier transform Ej omega naught t, and then we get plus one half the Fourier transform of E to the minus j omega naught t. <coughs> and that comes out to be pi delta omega minus omega naught plus pi delta omega plus omega naught. Okay. Okay, so that's the analytical solution at the bottom down here. Okay. But the question says, sketch it. So let's sketch it. We've got we're in the frequency domain, so that's going to be a function of frequency, and at the bottom we've got frequency. And we've got two delta functions. One is shifted over to this point, omega naught, and one is shifted over to this point, minus omega naught. So we've got a delta function here and a delta function here. Okay, that's what we had in the notes. That's covered in the notes in more detail. on page 139. So that's part one of the question. Part two says, go on to sketch the Fourier transform for a cosine signal of finite duration. Well, how do we get a cosine signal of finite duration? Okay, so let me, draw, let me do the time domain signal. So f of t This is in the time domain, so that's in time and cosine. So plus or minus time, okay, looks like that, starts at 1, okay, and obviously then oscillates backwards and forwards, depending, depending on what your omega is, and we're saying it's of finite duration, okay, so it's not from minus infinity to positive infinity, it's from some minus, I guess, I could write minus t naught here and t naught here, okay, it's from these two points, so it's a cosine signal of a finite duration. We can separate this into two graphs that are multiplied together, if you think about it. If we take cosine on its own, so I'll draw cosine on its own, and this goes on and on and on, so I'll do dot, dot, dot there, and we've got the same this side, dot, dot, dot here, so that's an infinite cosine signal. But if we multiply that by a rectangle, of height 1 from minus t naught to t naught. If you multiply an infinite signal by a rectangle, then you're going to get a signal that's limited between t naught, uh, between t naught and minus t naught. Do we all agree? You've got an infinite signal here, okay, times by a rectangle of height 1. So whenever those two things are multiplied together, you'll get the bit in the middle is multiplied by 1, everything else is multiplied by 0, so it's, it's nothing, so you get a finite signal. And the question is, what's the Fourier transform of this? Well, we know from uh, linearity that you can take the Fourier transform of this, which I'll, I'll write as cosine omega naught t, and then we take the Fourier transform of times, and then we take the Fourier transform of this we know is a p function with a being t naught. Okay? We've got cosine, which is infinite, times by, so I've got times in here, and then you've got the Fourier transform of p, which is the shape of that rectangle, times by t naught, which is the half of the width. Okay? The rectangle width is 2a. Down here you have a, okay? And so here A is T naught, so you have T naught down there. And we know 
what this is, okay? The Fourier transform of a of cosine, we just did it in the previous slide. So if I draw it in sketch form, this is omega. We've got one there, one there, this is omega naught, and this is minus omega naught. The Fourier transform of a multiplication is a convolution, okay, which we write with a star. And we know the Fourier transform of a rectangle. We've done it a few, many times now. Omega is you get the sinc function. You get the sinc function. And we can convolve those two together. So it's not multiplying, it's convolving. So we take one, we flip it over, and we pass it over those signals, and you end up getting You get two sinc functions, one either side of zero, down here, okay, positioned on minus omega naught and omega naught. That's the convolution of, this, of sine and the sinc function, or the spectrum <coughs> of sine and the sinc function, okay? Because you take that, you flip it over, and you pass it over, and wherever it, in, it starts to do um, intercept, you've got something of zero uh, or infinitesimally small width, and so you're just going to get the same signal again if you take the integral, okay, and you pass it over, and you, that's what you get. So we've got a, a series, in the time domain, we've got a series of sinc functions. So if I... So we've got the time domain here, and we've got a series of sinc functions. So I'll put one in the middle for argument's sake. And I'll put one here. And one here as well, why not? And the distance between them, I'm going to call T, my period. So using the logic that we solved in the previous one, we can work this, what this could, this could be. This could be the convolution, uh, sorry, this could be a series of delta functions. We've got one here, one here, and one here, with the distance of t between the two. Convolved with the sinc function. This is all in the time domain. So this, in a sense, is a comb, isn't it? Yeah, we've got a, um, a direct delta comb, which we talked about last week. You can take the Fourier transform of that. So if we took the Fourier transform of this, so the Fourier transform, if I call this f of t, f of t, we get another comb, which is what we covered last week. But this time, instead of the period being t, we have the period of 1 over t. Now, assuming t is larger than 1, they're going to get closer together. And this is in the frequency domain. Uh, one more. And the distance between these two one over t. We have a multiplication, because that's the Fourier transform of a convolution. And then we know that the Fourier transform of this is a p-function. This obviously goes on to minus and positive infinity. 
But again, we've got something similar that we had before. We've got a multiplication. We've got an infinite signal multiplied by a rectangle. So you're going to be able to you can be able to cut this off at a certain distance where those that applies. So obviously, your solution. So if I cut it off there, cut it off there. Assuming this is minus omega naught, say this is omega naught. There we are. And the distance between these two is 1 over t. So with this example, we've got a series of, of sync functions. I've just drawn three here, but they go on to inf minus and positive infinity. So let's just do that. Do some dots to indicate that they go on. OK. So that's going to be a series of delta functions multiplied by a sync function. OK, because if you convolve the two together, you get a Wherever there's a delta function, you'll get a sync function, which is what gives us a series. Okay? Now, we know that if you take the Fourier transform of this comb, okay, there's a comb of only three bristles there in a sense, but remember it goes on to, off to minus and positive infinity. You take the Fourier transform of that, you get another comb of delta functions, but this time the spacing is 1 over t as opposed to being t. Okay? So the and assuming t is greater than 1, you end up getting co uh, spacing that's a lot closer together than, um, than in the time domain. So you've got a, a comb there with more bristles, OK? And that's multiplied by the Fourier transform of the sink function, which is a rectangle, OK? It's a P function. And the Fourier transform of a convolution is a multiplication, which is what we saw before. So you can multiply those two together, and you'll end up getting um, a comb of finite width, 